Hey, welcome to part two of my build of the Subnautica Cyclops. The original video was too long to fit into one part, so I ended up breaking it up into multiple parts, much like the hull itself. In part two, we'll be going over the printing of the hull, the post-processing involved in making it waterproof and also making it look good, and the propulsion and steering that's mounted into the hull. Finally, there's a little bit of consideration there for the forward dome that you can put a camera in, and that is still kind of a work in progress, um, but it is a vast improvement over my first iteration of it. So the hull of the submarine is actually split into five components. Originally, I modeled it as a single component and began cutting it in the CAD software to get it down to something that's actually 3D printable. Each segment started at 250 millimeters, but the more people I talked to, the more I realized that 250 millimeters is not the average size of a lot of people's printers. Some of them come in at 200, so all of a sudden you go from two or three slices down to four slices, and then eventually five slices. Each part has to be printed separately. Uh, they have a little bit of changes to their orientation, but for the most part, they build upright. So all of those layer lines are kind of the same direction and finishing it and post-processing are actually kind of a breeze. The parts bolt together using one of my newer favorite things, which is melt in 3D print inserts. So these are little brass threaded inserts that allow you to screw parts together by just melting them into the plastic. So using a soldering iron, you can heat them up until they're able to be driven into pre-existing holes in the structure. So each segment has several of these. The largest two segments have the most holes, as you might imagine, and they are bolted together and loctited in place so they don't come apart. I tried to minimize the number of screws as I went back, so it goes from six screws down to, I believe, four, and then three, and then three to finally assemble it. It's five main parts of structure with another several small parts that allow it all to connect together. So you have a rudder, you have two horizontal dive planes, and you have a propeller. So right now it's in five main pieces. The first of which being about 200 millimeters long. This is the largest piece. Um, after the fact, I was able to reduce this down to two more pieces that you would have to glue together. But in the end, it kind of worked out. Before applying the epoxy coat, you have to insert all of the brass heat in threaded inserts into the sub. They're all metric uh, four millimeter fasteners and they sink into each uh, hole that I, I allocated a socket for on the hull. Uh, prepping the submarine involves a lot of removing of support material. You have to clean up the inside with uh, all sorts of pliers, snippers, uh, hand tools. Once the entire submarine has been sanded, then you can apply the XTC 3D to its surface. So this is technically optional, but it really increases the longevity of the structure and it ensures that even in the heat, in the sun, uh, the submarine doesn't melt because PLA plastic is pretty easy to melt. So the application of the XTC 3D resin is really simple. You just mix it up and paint it on. So I ended up applying about three coats in total to all of the submarine components. After three coats of epoxy, uh, you're able to sand it all down get it prepped, and I went in and coated everything in a filler primer. The filler primer is great because not only does it fill any uh, uh, voids, it also helps when you go back and you sand it, you can see all the high and low spots. I just used a uh, Rust-Oleum automotive uh, filler primer. After three or so coats of filler primer and really sanding it with a 100 and 200 grit sandpaper, uh, I came in with a 400 grit sandpaper and sanded the entire surface, prepping it for its final color. I chose yellow for mine because that's the color I allocated to my Cyclops in game. Basically you can paint it whatever color you want, that's all preference. Uh, I also added a black 
stripe across the middle uh, just to match the in-game uh, vehicle. Uh, masking it off really isn't that hard. I just used blue painter's tape and uh, made sure that there was no yellow showing where I didn't want to paint any black because you can't go backwards. You can only go forwards with the paint. After applying the paint, it looked great, but I had to redo the tail of the submarine and have it reprinted and redesigned completely. Um, the initial one was all kind of one piece, which in theory is really nice because you only print one part, but it doesn't work well when something breaks and you have to replace it. So the newer version had to be painted separately and assembled afterwards. From there, it's just a matter of assembling everything. So all of the parts are done at this point. The watertight cylinder, if you've got it working, you can just insert it into the sub. There's three pins in the bottom that align it, and it has a channel down the middle where it fits basically perfectly into it. The other thing I would always suggest too is putting Loctite in all the uh, screw mounts for each section of hull. That just prevents everything from coming apart. I just use Loctite Blue because I want to be able to t disassemble it in the future if I ever need to. <clears throat> the first six bolts are really hard to get in. It's a struggle to reach your arm down inside and uh, turn them about one half turn at a time, but it's totally possible if you're patient. One of the final steps is trimming the submarine. So the bags of gravel I had used earlier actually came in really handy here. I was able to weigh them, record their weight that they add to the cylinder, and then use that weight to determine an amount of lead weight that goes inside the sub. For this build, I ended up using the um, weights that actually get used to balance tires. Uh, they're an, a stick-on, peel-off weight, and they actually hold on very, very well, even in wet conditions, because they're meant to be all weather. The, the adhesive is really, really strong, so you have to really know when you place it down that it's going to stay and you don't need to move it again. So I just placed weights in until I reached the approximate weight of the gravel bags, but a little bit less because the hull itself has its own weight, but it also has trapped air. To figure out exactly where I was with things, I had to assemble everything and place the submarine in the water. The first time the sub sees water is a real big deal because it's kind of your first all-up test of everything. Uh, it was really, really cool to be able to see it, you know, actually float and be assembled because it's such a long-term project. Um, trimming the submarine involves making sure that it sits flat, so you add weight to the front and the back to ensure that it not only floats when the ballast tank is empty, but it also can sink when the ballast tank is full. So you just kind of weight it until it has just enough weight to float and just enough weight to sink when the tank is full. One of the final steps was putting the front dome on the sub recharging the battery and setting the direction to forward so that I can actually drive uh, in the forward gear. The, the pool is pretty large, so it works out really well for being able to drive and turn around though, so it's like the perfect environment. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. Engine powering up. 
the head standard.
going underwater actually was a lot easier when you have forward speed. Um, I had this concept that I would like dive, go down, and then be able to control left and right, almost like a, like a helicopter where I decide my altitude using like the, the pitch control. But in reality, it was more learning to use the horizontal fins like an airplane to steer up and down and move through the water. Uh, after the first dive, I actually ended up finding out that my servo for dive control was totally stripped out, so I just replaced it. It was old to begin with, so not a really fault of the project, just the hardware I chose to cut corners. So all in all, it works really great. Um, it has good handling in the water. Um, the rudder and dive planes are really large. Unlike a lot of models that are like nuclear submarines or the... Um, German U-boat submarines, it isn't really constrained by uh, something that already exists. Um, I kind of did my own liberties on the tail to add the horizontal planes, which the Cyclops doesn't have in game. Um, these are, are actually really, really helpful and they make driving it incredibly easy. Um, assembly of it just involves taking the tail off um, using these three screws here and inserting the watertight cylinder in place, connecting up with the wires, and capping the tail back on. It is decently fast though, so I've actually found myself hitting the wall of the pool at one point in a dive and cracking the dome on the front. But again, that's pretty cheap. Uh, it's just a security camera dome off of Amazon and I already got a replacement for it. Um, the other thing too that I had to add was this uh, rubber seal around the front of the dome. This. Uh, really helps keep the water from intruding into the, the dome while you're driving around. I, I intended to be able to put a camera inside this front dome on the sub so it would be like actually driving the Cyclops, but in the end when I first drove it I, I didn't do that just because I wanted to actually film it in action. It, uh, it's pretty speedy though, it, it's able to move fast enough to do something called dynamic diving, which is when you use something more like a, uh, an airplane where you're speeding through the water and using your uh, hydrodynamics to go up and down and left and right. Uh, not as much the ballast system, but the ballast system is a major help in doing this because I can make myself almost neutrally buoyant and then just drive as if I were you know, an aircraft. And if I shut off the power, it'll kind of gently rise back to the surface. So for improvements, I actually, in the process of just building the first submarine, I had designed a completely new submarine and watertight cylinder setup. Um, it's a little bit larger, but it still uses all of the same hardware for the most part, and it's a lot sturdier. Everything mounts to an internal rack that's able to be pulled out and put back in uh, with a lot of ease. Um, the current one is a little fiddly to pull apart and reassemble uh, every time you want to run it. This is still kind of necessary for the redesign, but most RC submarines need this. Uh, the new design of sub that I also came up with as well was supposed to kind of mimic a more real life sub. Um, it uses a lot of design cues from multiple deep sea submarines. And as an added bonus, instead of having servos like this one, it uses uh, all thruster driven movements. So there's more ports in the back of the cylinder and it just has motors that allow it to go up and down, forward, backward, and rotate in place. Uh, it's a lot more akin to someone who has like a home pool than something that I have here where I have a really large community pool. Uh, the print time should be probably about the same, but all in all, it's, uh, it's kind of a project down the road. I definitely want to pursue it. Uh, I'm looking at upgrading this hull with the new cylinder as well, so be looking out for that. And I will have the Thingiverse files for this build available as well, uh, with kind of a build guide to show you how to put this together, all the parts you'll need, and allow anyone who wants to, to make their own Cyclops submarine. So projects like this are really, really fun to do. They are a big test of how I am able to build things in CAD and then export them and then get them returned to me. So there's a lot of pressure to get it right the first time just due to the overall size of the prints. Parts for the sub went through dozens of iterations on the hull. 
the internal components were already sorted long before I had the exterior ready to go. It is totally optimized to be able to be printed in as few parts as possible and in as small slices as possible with minimal support material. All of this lowers your print time and makes it so that you have less likelihood of a failed print while it's being built. I modeled up the hull in my favorite CAD software just to be able to work on it as a single part and get the visuals right and make sure it matched the original Cyclops. I kind of tuned the design to be more tailored to what I had. So I had sought out a acrylic dome from a security camera system and I was going to be using that for the front dome on the Cyclops. Uh, that's a really hard part to make so being able to just buy one was a great win and in the end that is what scaled the entire submarine. So not only the length, the width, the overall shape of the cylinder and everything is scaled off that dome. This concludes part two. There's really not a lot of work to finish up the sub to where I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I have a few small add-ons I want to make to it, which I might showcase later on, but for the most part, it is done in its current form. This project took about four months from initial concept of this is what I'd like to do to driving it for the first time at the bottom of the pool. It's been uh, great fun, and I'm definitely going to be doing a few small upgrades in the future, like adding extra aesthetic parts to it to better match the actual in-game submarine, and I'll be hopefully adding better electronics to it in the future to alleviate some of the problems that I have with the current model. I also have a few cool ideas to kind of merge the rocket side of things and this using some inertial measurement units inside the sub to be able to control it, level it, and possibly make it run autonomous missions, which could be really, really cool in the future. I know this is a departure from the usual rocket stuff, so it is a little different, but I am happy that everyone kind of stuck with me as I did my own therapeutic project here. I actually got a lot of support on it from some people uh, who reached out to me, and I even got a little bit of recognition from the Subnautica team, which was really, really cool to be able to see them approve of my build. So the files are available on Thingiverse. You'll be able to go in and download all the hull segments, the watertight cylinder separately, and print them out and build them. So my goal behind this project was to be able to make something that is easily buildable for a lot of people. A lot of people are stuck at home right now, and home projects are a great way to spend the time and also build your own skill set. Over the course of the project, I actually built my skills out a lot on some things I'd never done before. Uh, I got a little better at post-processing, painting, application of seals, and, uh, and how different materials interact with each other. It was a, a really cool learning experience, and I hope others can actually share in that and build their own as well. So if you like projects like this or want to see more in this venue, uh, be sure to pop over to my Patreon and support. A little goes a long way, and I always give advanced access to anything I'm working on to all the patrons. So if you like the content and you want to see more or faster, then definitely head on over there. So I hope everybody enjoys. Uh, this was a really fun project, and I can't wait to get back to flying rockets again. I'll see y'all in the next video.